Coach, we are pleased as always to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. So this was the scene a moment ago. The Cardinals emerging from their tunnel, and we are ready for football as the Cards get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Rosen and the Cardinals take over with a first and 10. They'll look to throw on first down to Josh Rosen. And incomplete to open things up. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Second and 10, it's Rosen again. And this one complete to Jermaine Gresham. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses, because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of their defense, it hurts them in so many ways, because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. The pro bowler, Chris Harris, is in on the tackle. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback. And no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. On second down, Johnson. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Rosen just getting the snap off at one. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. Back deep, Adam Jones. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. <laughs> On first down, it's Keenum. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Dayon Buchanan. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Well, they're definitely with some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. The all-pro Von Miller there on the tackle. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Hurry up, here we go. 319. On third down, Rosen. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. 
And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. So now on comes the field goal unit. And, wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. Online, but off the crossbar, no good. A long-range effort denied three points at the very end. All things considered, a pretty good kick, just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck, and unfortunately for him... This time, the break goes against him. Keenum going to lead the Broncos up now first and 10. Here's Royce Freeman, the first carry for the rookie. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Robert Kendici, the one to bring him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum. Pass incomplete. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Shotgun snap for Keenum. He'll let this thing go for Sanders. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A gain of 32 that time. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. They go play action here on first down. He's going to take it. And caught by Sanders. Touchdown, Broncos. Emmanuel Sanders from 21 yards away. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The Booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. Extra point from McManus is good. And that makes the score 7-0. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is T.J. Logan to return it. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now looking at what the Arizona Cardinals have done so far this year, Charles, not great. 0-4, the only winless team in the NFL. Now, the Josh Rosen era did begin last weekend against Seattle, but he couldn't quite lead him to a victory. Yeah, it was his first career start. He had played a little bit in the previous game, but he's 15 of 2,780 yards and a touchdown. Not super impressive stats, but not abysmal. After the game, his head coach Steve Wilkes when asked, were there any bright spots in the game, immediately said Josh Rose has loved his poise. And I think they're very excited about what he can bring this team in the future. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Set. Green, 30. 
Now a handoff. Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. A first down carry here for Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Here's the rookie from Fordham. It's Chase Edmonds. It's a loss of two. Now third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Andy Lee now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Keenum going to lead the Broncos up now first and 10. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 22, here's second and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a play fake here on first down. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 49. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Here we go. 3 After the interception, here's Rosen. Caught right side, Gresham. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That throw good for four. It's second down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right, got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Johnson on the counter, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And now it's Rosen looking. And able to find Kirk complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. 
It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Tenth carry for Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's a loss of eight yards there to bring up third. I mean, that was an example of why offensive linemen might want rearview mirrors at times because you have your assignments to block, but if you can see what's going on in the backfield and maybe the guy carrying the ball is headed in another direction, it might change what you do up front. But if they can't see that... And he's not in sync with what they're doing up front. But this is when you end up with plays like this. A bad one for the offense, a really good one for the defense. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. And coming out now, the Broncos. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And got his man complete. It's a big play. Keenum to Thomas. And even 50 yards. The well, last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be. Because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window. And it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know, there's a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. On first and 10, here's Keenum. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. to the air on second down it's Keenum incomplete looking to go back to Thomas again and it's third down the turnover put him in great field position they don't want to squander it with third down coming up no not at all and you know what else you do you make your defense mad yeah. they got you the football gave you a great opportunity you've got to cash in and get some points the chance of wasting this great starting field position a real threat this is third and long Throwing his Keenum on third down. And that's incomplete. There was no secret who they were trying to get the football to. Well, no, they went to him on first down, second down, third down, all three incomplete. Yeah, and when you're unable to connect and you force it in that direction, all you're doing is giving confidence to the defense. They feel like they're really hurting you in a big way. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. 
No such luck there for him. Rosen and the Cardinals take over with a first and ten. They begin the drive with Johnson. Uses the stiff arm. And now running right through it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Rosen off the play action. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And incomplete. Crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Cardinals on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. From the gun, it's Rosen. And he's got Gresham. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Where they convert on third with a gain of 22. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Here's Johnson. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. You mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, Adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are. Figure out the things that they really want to accomplish and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? Find those guys and get in that direction. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Here we go now. Three. Third and long here for Rosen. And he's got Fitzgerald. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. The Cardinals into the red zone for the first time. This is first and goal from about the eight. Here we go now. <laughs> On the carry, it's Edmonds. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. And Johnson on an island by himself with the backfield. Second and goal. Set, blue lining. Rosen will throw. And he is going to be wrapped up and swung to the turf. And there's another sack for Bradley Chubb, and that's exactly why they drafted him. 
but don't discount his ability to play the run. This is a big, strong young man who understands offensive schemes, how they try to block, and he'll stand stout against the running game as well as continuing to get after the passer. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Screen play, Johnson. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Well, they are able to get nine yards out of that, but now it's fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Dawson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Now after the main field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. This fielded at the two. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Demarius Thomas, 69 yards. And the Broncos able to show off their quick strike ability. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. He finds an opening past the 40. And all the way up to the 45-yard line. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. Play action here with Rosen. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Set. Green, three. From midfield now, here's Rosen. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. 
When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. The busy night continues for Johnson. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Second down, Rosen. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is right, use his go. body three, to keep the defender three. away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chad Williams, and now it's second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. From the 21, it's second and 10. They go back to the ground with Johnson. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. Now Rosen looking to throw. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Dawson's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Now after the made field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. And on the ground they go with a running back. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now it's Keenum here off the bootleg. Flush to his right, and he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, and his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now 
He's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And they'll go on the ground. A gain of three, second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll try the air now with Keenum. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Working from the gun, Keenum. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. Back to throw, Keenan. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. On first down, it's Keenum. His throw caught at about the five. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They come up in an offset eye. That's right, running in with Janovich, the fullback. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. Andy Janovich, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos will extend their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. 
managing risk. This is a big decision here. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Here we go now. Blue lining. Blue lining. Now Rosen to throw on second down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Johnson the intended target, and it's third and five. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and five. Let's go! Blue lining! Blue lining! From the shotgun, it's Rosen. And Gresham's got it over the middle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, CD, a quick look back at week four in the NFL. Not good for rookie QBs. They went 0 for 4. He had Rosen and Mayfield making their first starts. Both close losses. Yeah, and Sam Darnold took on Jacksonville, one of the better defenses in the league. That's a tough go, and obviously lost that game. And then how about Josh Allen in Buffalo going to Green Bay? The Packers wearing the throwback uniforms. He almost didn't have a chance in that one. That was a really difficult one. But you mentioned Rosen and Mayfield. Close losses. Acquitted themselves pretty well overall, although Mayfield did turn it over four times in the game. But I like what we're seeing out of them. The one winner, though, is Lamar Jackson. But it doesn't go on his record. He wasn't the starting quarterback. Used a little bit in their game in their win over Pittsburgh. The Cardinals on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and six. All right, here we go. Boom! Off the play fake. Here's Rosen. Airing this one out for Fitzgerald. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. And you got to think, if this is anything other than just taking a knee, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, they've got enough to talk about at the half. Why do anything else? Let's get out of there. Final 10 seconds of the half as they've got it first and 10. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll power his way up near the 25. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Keenum now 8 of 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. Now a play fake, and it's Keenum. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Keenum. And he lost the football. And this is recovered by the Cardinals. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. This is taken in by Chad Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. to throw on first down with Josh Rosen. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brandon Marshall coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Johnson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. Now let's go! They go play action. It's Rosen. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Von Miller in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. The number two pick back in 2011, Von Miller still doing his thing. Boy, is he ever. If I were an offensive tackle, I don't know what I would do. I would tell the tight end he's got to stay in on all passing situations and help me out because he's got every move imaginable. One of the quickest guys off the ball in the league, and he's going to get to the quarterback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this try. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And there's so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. So he was holding from that left tackle position. 
everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Now that's a gain of six on the first down run. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Keenum throwing on second. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Throwing his Keenum on third down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. The Broncos send out their punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. This will be fielded at the 17. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Cards will take over first and 10. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Hurry up, here we go. They go to Johnson again. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He lost two there, and it's third down. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Set, three, 19. On third down, Rosen dumping it off for Johnson. And he showcases the spin, a pretty good gain before he's taken down. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Andy Lee now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And they'll run it here. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. And now we're going to get a delay of game. 
And that's going to back him up halfway. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. After the penalty, here's Freeman. And some room to run now. And they're going to get this all the way out past the 20. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Let's go, let's go. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. It's the pro bowler Chandler Jones who makes the tackle. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Keenum. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. The Broncos send out their punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They'll try to get the offense going with Johnson. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. There we go now. Again, it's Johnson. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson, and he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pick up there to keep this drive going. seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Now let's go! And they'll throw it with Rosen. Throwing the out route incomplete. 
It's Williams. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. And it completes it to Kirk over the middle, and he's able to get up here to the 26. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Here we go now, green 39. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Fitzgerald. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing now, Rosen on first down. Caught on the left side, Fitzgerald. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now Rosen on first down. Underneath for Johnson. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. All right, here we go. Green. Throws into throw again. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. Go That's going to feel Three good and look great in film. Throwing again, it's Rosen. Pass the 20, and he's got Gresham. And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as right, possible. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Now Rosen looking to throw. Looks for Nelson, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. He's got the lane, and there he goes. He's at the 30. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, and he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Marcus Golden in there to get him for a loss of five. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster. And now on second and goal, back even further. Cut. Off the 
Play fake. Keenum. That's caught. It's Thomas. Really nice gain on the completion. However, still third and goal that they face now. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he has kept the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? Keenum now on third and goal. And this is going to be incomplete. Cook hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This to make it a three-score game late. And McManus able to put it through. And that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure ah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. With it on the return is Logan. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he finds Fitzgerald. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now Rosen to throw on second down. And Gresham's got it over the middle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. On first down, it's Rosen. This one complete to Gresham. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That throw good for four. It's second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up right, second and six. Again, it's Rosen. Screen play, Johnson. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. They want to go to the air again with Rosen. And that is incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Here we go. It's Rosen on fourth down. Looking for Fitzgerald, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Marshall. 
Marshall. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure's been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. This offensive line starting to win up front. You win that battle in the trenches, you can kind of wear them down here late. So you bring in the second part to that equation, and that's the big running back, the big bruiser, who can get more than what's blocked and break a few extra tackles and gain yardage. Hey, the They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll get three out of the 34-yard line. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they won't put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. On second down, Freeman. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The Broncos on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, here's Keenum. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Demarius Thomas, his second touchdown of the night, and the Broncos will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Now McManus on to kick this one off. With it on the return is Logan. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me once, you know, when we're having a tough patch, Let's this go. two shall pass, this two shall pass, and if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Second down, Rosen. And this will be incomplete. The intended receiver was David Johnson. Third down here. Certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. 
From the gun, it's Rosen. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Rosen on first and 10. Caught left side, Williams. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Now let's go! Green 39! Green 39! They'll look to throw on first down with Josh Rosen. Dumping it off for Johnson. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell now. at him for trying to make that play. Now it's Rosen. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. <laughs> From the red zone now, here's Rosen on first down. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. Facing this fourth quarter deficit, felt like they had to throw the ball, and on the other side, they were ready. No doubt about it, they're playing situational football. They look at the clock, they know the lead that they have, and all they're doing is playing pass on every down. Playing the pass, picking it off, and now big time in the driver's seat. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night from Glendale.